All right, what's going on, Trips Point 323 here. I started the video on uh, taking the sink out of this 110, 115 year old house. So I got the sink out, but when I put the other one in, just kind of test fit, I do have to cover all this up. I have to start covering this up or putting a, a backsplash, but I would rather have a fix than cover it up before I put the backsplash in anyways. So I gotta fix all this right here, and all I'm gonna use is joint compound. I got tape over there to tape it if I wanna make it a little bit more solid, but I'm gonna, I might put the tape on the first coat, put it in there, smooth it in there, and the second coat should cover it up. I know, me personally normally do three coats of joint compound, let a day dry in between. This is my first time using this joint compound right here. Uh, Perform Light, my son ran to Walmart to get it for me. Okay. Doing joint compound, you're supposed to use your first day, your second day, and your third day. Spread it out. You know, your first day, you can just go on what you need. And then your second day, you're supposed to go out a little wider. And then your third day, I actually got to clean this one better. It's basically just really wide across it. And then this way you should be done. Uh, my first time using this one right here, so I'm going to see how this compound works. And I'm probably going to use this one right here. What you really don't want to do is you don't want to get your old compound dropped in. It's all old and crusty dropped in your new mud. Because if you get it dropped in there when you're sanding, you're going to have that little knot in there. That little rock in there. This is my first time using this joint compound. People are like, oh, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this, that. I mean, there's, what I do is I put on the first coat of mud, and then I go back and smooth over it. I'm just making sure it's really good, because once it dries, it'll fill in some, and then your stage two is going to fill in more anyways. Uh, like I said, I'm jack of all trades, master of none, although I've freaking finished whole rooms myself or for my friends with joint compound and it looks beautiful so I'm comfortable with me compounding and sanding and what I tell everybody is you can do whatever you want to do as long as you put your heart to it and with uh, or your mind to it and c compounding and sanding there really ain't no dang mistake because if you think you made a mistake the next day, just sand it down, whatever you want to start sanding down again, and start from there again. It doesn't matter. This one, I'm probably not going to need any, uh, need any, uh, taping. Because it's really not that much, uh, that deep as I thought it was going to be. We'll see if you can see right there. Yeah, see that coat of mud went like really smooth right there. See that? It's really smooth. It's almost, you know, then I'll go ahead and sand it down tomorrow and then put another coat over it and then fill in most of the holes tomorrow. Yeah. This coat right here, I'm just trying to make sure the, the big gaps are filled in. It's kind of as smooth as what I need it to be. And then tomorrow's coat, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sand it really, you know, sand it really smooth. The bad thing about this, the only bad thing I don't like about the joint compound that I got right now is it doesn't say a drive time. Okay, now I got everything I wanted. Like this right here don't even need to be on here. You could just get all that down. All this is going to be painted over anyways. There's a big hole right here going up. I want that nice and smooth. Big hole right here going sideways. I want that nice and smooth. Big right here going downward. Want that nice and smooth. 
And then all of this is really going to fill in over the next couple days and sand down. There's kind of little holes. I can fill these in right now. This right down here is actually going to be behind the sink. So it doesn't really need to be that smooth. But you know, I try to make it look as best I can. And also joint compound, when it dries, it shrinks a little bit. So when it shrinks, you're gonna have to fill it in anyway. So I'm gonna do a little bit more in there. And you just keep going until you think you got it smooth enough. And then on the second day, you just sand down, knock down what you need to knock down, and then put your second coat. See, that right there took a little too much out. All right, about your uncle, that's done until tomorrow. Let it dry, come back with a, a sanding pad. And after I come back with a sanding pad and I put another coat on it, all this right here is going to come off really easy with a sanding pad. I actually saved a little uh, piece of this paint because I'm going to take it into Menards. And when I take it into Menards, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have the paint matched. So when I paint over this, it's going to almost be the exact same color. Anyways, that's the first coat. If you're ever going to joint comp on something, don't be afraid. Like it says, if it don't come out perfect, you're just going to sand it and do it again you know once you do three coats you're gonna have enough layers on there to sand and it'll look perfect you won't be able to tell anything all right anyways that's just a quick tip on joint compounding i'm gonna do three days and i'll put the sink back in or the new sink in all right talk to you later bye all right what's going on truck 2323 rob here uh this is day two with this compound and you know like it says, I let it dry overnight, but this is just basic. I mean, I've jack of all trades, master of none. All I'm trying to do is repair this, get this decent enough to paint it so that I can put the sink back in. And it's not as uh, bad as it was, you know. But uh, this is the second day of compounding. Uh, I just, all I'm doing really is to do this video is to show you that anybody could do this. If you've never done it before, go ahead and, and, and do it because you really can't mess it up. One other thing I want to, to mention to you is... If you're putting two pieces of drywall together, you have to put the tape in between the, uh, the I, I use the sticky uh, mesh tape. Let me grab some real fast. Sorry. Like uh, filling in a big crack or something like that. You got to put the tape. You put the tape over the seam and then you do your three different layers, you know, a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more after that. But you have to put this. Seeing that this was just where uh, the old sink was mounted in the wall, I really didn't need to put the tape. Uh, there's sponge sanders to use. You could use just a little sponge sander. Those are really good to use. Believe it or not, I had that one on hand. I normally have a whole bunch on hand, but when I change the rims out, I use the sponge sanders to clean around the rim. This right here, if you got a big place, uh, a whole area to sand, these are really good. These are uh, sanders, uh, drywall sanders, but uh, it's like a screen on here. It's not sandpaper or it's a regular block sander. Just don't use your ha regular hands because if you use your regular hand, it's not going to come out as smooth. So with these right here, uh, this is not too much area. All I'm trying to do is to knock it down so this way I can put another coat. This is going to be my second coat. And cover up whatever you don't want to get compound down. Because let me tell you this right here. This, I mean, yeah, this sand in this compound is going to be... Uh, this dust gets all over the place. Technically, yes, I should have a mask on. Uh, I just finished painting the outside. I came in to get this blocked down a little bit so I could do my second, uh, second coat of compound. No. All right, that's all I need to do to get my second coat on. I'm gonna get a broom and dust it all down to get a lot of this off of it because if what this will do is if when you try to put your new uh compound on for your second coat it'll like ball up in your second coat so i'm gonna get a broom and sweep some of this down 
you see right here i need some more right in this area just a little nicks right here and then i need to bring the compound up to here because this right here isn't really feathered just yet you can feel the difference it's not feathered in so today i'm bringing the compound up here and i need to fill it right there technically with this to tell you the truth looking at this i could probably get away with just two coats of compound on this but i'm probably gonna do three but either way i'm gonna show you doing the second coat of compound and then i'll sand it tomorrow all right now this paddle is bigger than the paddle i had yesterday and i'm gonna try to bring the compound up to the top today uh filled in really good yet i mean i might be able to get away with two coats uh but I know my wife, so I'm not going to try to get away with two coats because my wife will be like, yeah, I know you only did two coats to finish it early, but, uh, see, I mean, it's, it's really smooth already. So that's why I said I could probably get away with two coats. See, that's done. That's basically done right there. But I'm a perfectionist, so I know I'm going to keep going. But you see, I said it got to be feathered in. Perfect right there. And I mean, this I don't do this for a living. I just, like I said, my, my motto is Jack of all trades, master of none. So what I, all I'm trying to show you is you can do it too. I mean, I mean, little simple stuff like this you should be able to do. I tell anybody, if you're a homeowner, uh, you know, one thing that I won't do that I need right now is I need my, uh, I need my, uh, my main beam. I know it sank a little bit and I need that done. Now that I haven't yet to tackle myself. Probably could do it. But I have yet to tackle that one myself. I had to do another coat. See how the little, uh, found a little holes in that one. It's kind of, there's no right way, basically, you just do where you think it's smooth enough where you can sand. That right there is feathered right now, but when the, the paddle is hitting the top of this, that's what's getting those little lines in there. So I got to bring it a little bit lower. See? And then when you get the little holes like that, there's, you'll, you'll see a little bunch of little beads in there. Uh, really, with those right there, you could actually get out with uh when you paint over it with a thick mesh roller it'll cover those right up all right here we go. Now that's close enough for government to stand up. Oh, you know what? I'm going to put some more in there because I don't want that to be, uh, that got to be a little bit smoother. But you know, I, you just keep going until you're comfortable with it. All right. I'm going to shut the video off now. I'm going to keep going until I'm comfortable with it. Let it dry one more time. After tomorrow's sanding, it should be ready for paint, but I might do three coats. I'm not sure yet, but you're supposed to do three coats, but I think there isn't too much damage here where I can get away with two. I just want to show you that you can do this. Just take your time. Uh, wear your mask, uh, get your sanding paper, your sanding blocks, and then, you know, even if you just got little imperfections like that, when you use a thick mesh roller, it'll cover it up, you won't be able to see it. So don't take it too, 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 uh, like, gotta be per perfection, alright? It's, 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 it's really easy to do, alright? Talk to you later, bye-bye. What's going on, Rob here, Trust 2323. Uh, this is going to be the second day of sanding the third coat if i decide to do a third coat what i wanted to tell you is make sure you get everything out of here when you're sanding because look it i got my wife's soap dispenser i got dust all over forte here uh you'll actually get dust all over the place if you don't cover it up but forte is like really dusty so i gotta hide them and clean them off 
All right, what I wanted to show you is seeing this is second the third second day of sanding here. What I went to get from Menards, all they had was a small one though. They didn't have the big one. Wall sanders. This is a small area one. I love these things, but if it was a big, uh, like I said, if it was a big, I was doing the sheets of uh, four by eight sheets. I would definitely be using the wall sander. It, it gets a more bigger area and it makes a bigger area smoother. This right here, what I need smooth is right around here, right around here, and right around here. This part is going to be in the cabinet. Also, what I figured I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cabinet up against the wall to figure out where it's going to be at. And I'm going to paint in here white. And the rest of it, I'm going to paint the blue. I'll probably paint it all white first. Another thing, wow, a lot. When you got a fresh joint compound or dry joint compound or drywall, man, you're going to have to primer it because that stuff is going to drink paint if you just try to put regular paint on it. This will absorb a lot of paint. But either way, these are the sanding pads that I was telling you about. These are like a buck each. And also, when you sand, try to go like diagonally, diagonally. Don't just keep going right here, then down right here, then down right here, because then you're going to have lines, grooves. And don't press too hard. Let the sand, let the sander do the work for you. Don't press really hard because then you're going to put lines in it. See this right here? This could actually use a third coat, but this is going to be behind the cabinet, so it really ain't going to matter. Up here is what's going to matter. I see it. you sand that area down where you kind of feather it in and it really you can't really tell the difference right now and it looked like it was a big hole but now it's feathered in pretty good but it's behind the wall anyways okay oh, here. okay that's about all sanded down that I can get today you're, sp oh, you're supposed to wear your mask all right let me tell you this this right here perfect smooth 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 this right here feathered perfect 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 this right here got a little bit of bump still so to do a third coat you would have to do a third coat right you know kind of just right here to, to get this in really good or if you got a thick mat on your roller if you go over with a thick mat with your roller it does hide a lot of imperfections now this wall is from 1910 so there's other imperfections in the wall so I'm just debating right now. I might just end it with this. This video I was really to show you that you know what? If you've never done drywall and compound and plaster repair or anything before, you can actually do it yourself. It's really easy. Uh, with plaster repair also, I think I had other videos up with plaster washers, you know, when your, it buckles off. There's little washers that you could drill in with drywall screws and it'll put the plaster back to the wall. But this right here, all I did was put joint compound over everything that was pretty bad. Uh, this right here got to be taped off and then just paint it over a primer and then paint. Uh, I'm going to vacuum all the dust up right now, then I'll decide from there. I'm going to end the video with that. You know, I, I mean, basically the third coat is going to be just as the other two coats, but you would actually kind of do a wider where this whole thing would probably be covered up with compound. Although since this is really good and that's really good, actually I would only put compound right here and then feather it in tomorrow. But it's just very minute if you feel that. The, Two coats of paint might even cover that up. So I'm going to be figuring out what I'm going to do with that. But now I want to show you how good the pads were. These things are miracles. And uh, just give it a shot. I mean, if you're worried about it, you're watching the video because it's your first time uh, compounding, go ahead and give it a shot. You can't mess it up. The worst thing was worse. If I gouge this with a knife right now, you know what I do? Do three more coats and it'll be nice. All right. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. It's me. One coat of primer with a roller. I just rolled it on one coat of primer and it was extra that I... You know, when I finished painting my soffits with the roller, I wrap in two uh, Walmart bags or two bags, plastic bags. If you're not done with it, put the wrapper in plastic bags and tie it up. The humidity will keep it moist. So I actually took the roller out of that bag. And this is what I went over it with. Uh, it's, this is a primer paint also. And this is what I went over it with. And you could tell everything's smooth. Everything's really smooth. So right now, 
I got extra primer paint for this color. I, I still keep anything we paint the walls with or whatever. I always keep the can, keep the color code. So I got it for this color code. Let this dry, then I'll paint it over. Then that's it with the video. Uh, then I got to go back to the other video. I'll put the cabinet back in. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Okay, what's going on, Trev 2323? I'm just going to go ahead and finish this video up. I finished it up like two or three times, right? Look at it. Perfect. Matched everything. If you could see a difference here. Now, I was just trying to get in the picture here. If you could see a difference here, this is where my mistake is. It's almost not visible to the eye, but this is where I repaired right here. And at the end of my repair over here, and at the end of my repair over here, the wall goes... Oh, man, am I in there? Yeah, okay. The wall goes back to a 110-year-old wall. Lines, lines up here, lines up here, and where the repair is, is completely smooth like a brand new wall. So this was actually just two coats. I've just done two coats, and I have a big light on this where you can see it. You shut the light off right here. It, I mean, it's perfect. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with it. So... Uh, I don't do this for a living. I don't do this for a trail. As a matter of fact, you see me get bummier and bummier as the day goes on. I went to work this morning. I came back. I washed the van. I buffed out parts of the van that I actually painted myself. My son had a flat tire, so I helped him change the flat tire. It actually was just a bead. We resealed the bead. On top of that, in the middle of doing that, I was doing this with the coats. I, when I taped this off, I did uh, two coats of trim first and then two coats with the roller. I left this white down here. I don't know if you can see it because that's going to be into the cabinet, you know, behind the cabinet. So that's why I left this white. This pipe right here, actually, the one goes into the wall has a hole in it. What I did is I actually caulked on. I'm going to let this dry a little bit more. I've done it. This was like 10 years ago. I caulked on an inch and a half over the inch and a quarter pipe. And caulked it on and sealed it and it held together for 10 years. But working today with everything, it kind of loosened up a little bit more. So I put I resealed it with 50-year-old, 50-year caulk, which I, I love. I don't know the name of it, but it's like a, a lifetime limited lifetime guarantee. When you use it aside, it lasts forever. So if you've seen uh, the other watch the video when I took out this antique faucet, I actually cut that caulk with a razor blade and it was just still real pliable, really good. Either way, I don't even know if I'm in there again. Okay, either way, thanks for watching. That right there was just how to compound the wall, how to repair a plaster wall. There's other ways to do it. I got other videos up where there's big buckles in there. And I, I also got videos up on how to repair a drywall. So it's Trev 2323 drywall or something. You'll find that. Uh, my next step in this phase is I'm going to put the new cabinet in. So that's going to be part three of the video. All right. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.